All right. I it is we 11. Good to go. Candice, take it away. Awesome. It's 11 right on the dot. So we're going to get started um, and we're going to talk about um, pets and oils today. I'm really excited about this. Um, Jan, Wendy, and I all have uh, dogs. I also have a cat. Um, been using essential oils on my pets with my pets, pets for um, since I started with oils. So very comfortable. We use them regularly in our home. Um, so something I'm going to start off with a lot of the information um, we've gathered and stuff like that um, is because doTERRA has a an actual advisory board, a veterinary advisory board. And one of those women, um, Janet Rourke, has a book and it's called Essential Oils for Pets Guidebook. It is a great resource. So if you want more information, information. Great resource. She's also on Facebook as well. Um, so she's a great person to reach out. Oh, who's bad? I don't know who's bad. <laughs> oh, two bad dogs. <laughs> yeah, bad dogs. I've got a bad dog currently right now. Bad puppy. Um, all right. So next slide, Wendy, if we can get started on that for me. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to go over some really high level basic um, things um, and rules and guidelines with your pets. If you want to know anything else, um, if you want to dig deeper into certain uh, species or anything like that, um, let us know and we can talk more about that in a, either another live or a class. Um, this can be really high level and for the most part um, for cats and dogs, okay? So some basic guidelines that we want to follow, aromatic uh, and diffusing, aromatic use or diffusing is the safest method to use your essential oils around your pets. Uh, I have never have had an issue um, diffusing any of doTERRA's essential oils uh, around my pets, but the main thing that you want to remember is you're never going to want to trap an animal in a room and diffuse. You always want to allow them to move away from the diffuser, move out of the room if they don't like it, okay? Um, and this in includes diffusing around birds. Um, doTERRA's essential oils are very safe, uh, but again, make sure you're not trapping the animal in an enclosed room. If it's a larger room, no big deal. Now, topical and internal. So we do topical internal because for cats and dogs, if you put it anywhere where they can lick it, they're going to lick and essentially it becomes an internal oil. So just keep that in mind. So whenever you're topical, you're generally internal. So if you follow the internal rules, you're going to be safe. So you're going to create a positive experience to so never force an essential oil onto an animal. You're going to, you can allow your animal to choose. So you might select three oils with similar benefits, allow the animal to sniff each bottle and watch their body language to see um, which essential oil they prefer. That's a fun game um, to play. Actually, it's very interesting to see their body language. You're going to dilute with a carrier oil, a carrier oil, sorry, not water when you're applying your essential oils topically. Um, doTERRA touch rollers are safe. So if you are like, I don't know about these things, use doTERRA touch um, oils and you're going to be fine. Um, you can mix with a carrier oil carrier oil, oh, I can't say that word today, in a capsule, or you can add a drop to their food when you're using internally. Um, I know I do that. Uh, I know Jan has done that before. I think Wendy has as well. So something great um, that you can do, use, um, add right to their food, but we're talking like one drop, maybe a half. Uh, another tip is for really small dogs, like I have a nine pounder. If you don't wanna add a whole drop um, into their food or half a drop, you can use a toothpick um, and just stir that into their food. Now, dilution ratios. I've kept it really simple here. If you guys wanna take a snapshot of this, this is basically out of um, Janet Rourke's book. Your dilution ratios, I gave an example, 0.5% is, is one drop to 10 milliliters of carrier oil. So for dogs, depending on the size, you're gonna go 0.5 to 3%. Cats is 0.5 to 2%. And for small, young and elderly or ill animals, you're gonna dilute more and use less, okay? Always with doTERRA oils, less is more. So dilute if you don't feel comfortable. Last but not least, we are not vets. So always ensure to use species appropriate oils <laughs> and consult your vet if, you, um, if your pet has health issues or is on medication. There are some medications, very few, but um, there are some medications where you wanna stay away from particular oils. So make sure um, that you're um, up to date on all of that. We do have some, uh, a lot of this information. So if you have questions, let us know. All right. Next slide. I'm going to hand it over to Jan. She's going to talk about a couple of oils for us. 
Awesome. Thanks, Candice. So I have a uh, 16 pound dash hound mix and uh, we've been using oil since we got them. And one of, we have two things that we love to use. So the two that I use probably fairly consistency with him are Tamer. And this is our digestive blend out of the um, kids line. I love to use the kids line because it's specially diluted. I do have a smaller dog and this is great. So if you have a dog that is nervous in the car, maybe gets car sick, like my dog did when he was a puppy, every time we went for a drive, he would throw up and it was horrible. So this is really great for any sort of motion sickness, or if you feel like he's just, your dog's just not really feeling the greatest. Um, I can only speak to dogs because that's all I have. So I'm going to let Candace <laughs> speak about all of the animals. Um, I'm just going to speak about my dog particularly, because this is what I've uh, tested, tried and true. Um, so Tamer's great. So what I do with Tamer is I actually will open up the roller and roll it on my hand rub my hands together and then I'll just rub it on his belly and I'll do that before we go into the car or if he's having any sort of issues not feeling the greatest I'll do that and he loves the smell so he just loves this one it's so great and I find that once we started doing that it kind of helped him get over that car sickness altogether so that maybe he grew out of it I don't know but we had such great success with using the tamer it was amazing and then my second favorite oil to use with my dog is copaiba so uh, copaiba is as you can see on the slide there anti everything it's fabulous but what we use it for is calming and soothing and then i have a little quick story so if your dog is one of those ones i'm sure all dogs where it's um the fireworks or maybe it was the thunder last night um gets really anxious and upset with that this is a great calming oil as well so with my dog will put one drop into his food or one drop in my hand and let him lick it. Um, and if, again, if you have a smaller dog, try the toothpick method. If you have a larger dog, maybe you can go up to two drops, but I'd always start with, with one or less and see how your dog reacts. Cinco loves um, the copaiba. He's ready to take it. When he's nervous, he knows he can take this and it just helps ease his nervousness. Um, another really quick story he got stuck in the fence last year. There was a hole in the fence. If you can imagine a wiener dog stuck halfway through a fence, <laughs> his back end at one side and his front end trying to get through the fence to visit his neighbor and he got stuck. So of course he, he didn't have any bruises or cuts or anything, but he was sore. And so again, you can use the copaiba or the roller, put a little bit in your hands and I just pat them down. And he just found such relief from that. And I would do that just one or two times a day, depending on how they're feeling. So really great if they're feeling any sort of discomfort. So Candice, I'm going to put it back to you to talk about the next two. If you have more to say about these two oils, you go right ahead, Candice. No, that that's absolutely amazing. I literally use um, those oils in the exact same way. Um, Tamer has been a godsend because I do the puppy that we have, um, Australian Shepherd puppy. He has liked to get car sick. And so Tamer is one of the oils that we use like all the time before we go out. Um, I actually have little rollers that sit in the car right now because if I forget to put them on before I go out, they're there. The other oil that we use in conjunction for Tamer when we go out on car rides is actually Calmer. So what I will do with Calmer, because Calmer is literally what the name says, it calms the mind, it kind of reduces that stress. So for, again, with fireworks, um, with car rides, anything that might make them a little nervous, um, loud noises, um, if they're going to a new location and they're a little unsure or even around people and stuff, um, just to be able to calm them down a bit. I love calmer. And so what I will do is I will actually take it, roll it on my palms. And then I like to take his ears and just pull it out onto his ears, rub it into his ears. And what's great about the ears is you don't want to get it in the ears, but on the ears themselves and the ear tips is that it's really close to their nose. So we know that when you smell it, you know, um, affects our brain and helps to um, calm the brain down really quickly. And so I love um, using that on his ears. So we do that on his ears. I, with the tamer, I will tell you, I have a nine pound Boston Terrier and then I have the puppy um, who's going to be, you know, like four times the size of my Boston. I use tamer the exact same way on both dogs. And that's literally, I take, I, I pull them up and I find the little patch on their belly where there's no hair and I roll the tamer right on. So <laughs> I just throw it right on there. Um, that has worked really well for us. 
Um, with regards to cats, um, there are some oils in uh, in the blends that they can't have, like uh, mints uh, are one of those and that uh, things like that you, you want to stay away from with, with cats. So um, what I do is, generally speaking, I always use just topically and I just make sure the blend. Um, uh, is is okay for them um that being said on my cats because my cats have always been indoor cats usually they just get the benefits of diffusion um i think i've only ever once used um an oil topically on a cat and that's about it so again you know unless there's an actual problem diffusing for cats is just the way to go now frankincense frankincense is just like for us our uh, cellular blend it is great at supporting us on an everyday basis i actually like to put copaiba and frank in my dogs uh, drop in their bowls each of these um, on a basically regular basis it helps with cellular development it helps keep them healthy um it's great for mood management frank you know i put that shit on everything is my my motto and for the dogs it's pretty much the same thing uh even with cats frankincense is a really good topical oil it's super safe um dilute appropriately but again for anything frankincense is good to go so next slide i will hand it over to wendy yeah, oh, I love that. And I use all of those ones as well. And we use Copaiba on our horses as well as some other ones, although we're not talking equine today. So one of the biggest questions that we've been getting and that we will continue to get through the spring and into the summer and fall is, what can I do for flea or tick or bug prevention? And so we have three main oils that we use. And then there are lots of others that you could add in. I choose to usually jazz it up, but Terra Shield is our bug repellent blend, both for humans and for animals. Geranium is an oil that is specifically helpful in tick prevention and same with lemon eucalyptus. So you can make a bug off spray and you might wanna snap a screenshot here. Um, and this would be in a 30 mil spray bottle. So the typical on guard hand sanitizer size and the Terra Shield spray size, this would be a typical solution. Now, if you have a really small dog, you might want to put it in half at first, but you're going to mix 10 drops of Terra Shield, five drops of geranium and five drops of lemon eucalyptus in a 30 mil. I usually make a much bigger batch because we're using this on ourselves. This summer we'll be using it on horses and the dogs. So I like the Dollar Tree metal sprayers. I don't really love bringing glass outside. Stuff always falls over. And especially if you have like a pool or cement or anything, you don't want that. But um, you're gonna put it in, put those drops in, mix it with water and a little bit of aloe vera juice or a little bit of witch hazel, or you could even do rubbing alcohol just as a bit of a stabilizer. Shake and spray. You can spray on the dog, although I choose to spray it on my hands and then apply it because, well, I don't wanna just spray oils into the air. <laughs> They're precious, right? So I usually spray my hands, rub down the dog, put it on their chest, usually a little bit their legs behind around their neck. And then I make sure that I'm spraying myself, my especially around my ankles um, if we're going for a walk or a hike in the woods. So these three are an excellent combination. Some other oil suggestions for you, citronella, um, shield, lavender is a bug repellent. So there's lots of options, but these would be our main three. For that. And cedarwood are also really good. And cedarwood. Yeah. Yeah, really true. So if you're going super simple, start with this. If you want to go broader, jazz it up. Terra Shield on its own is great, but if you want the extra tick prevention, it's um, geranium and lemon eucalyptus are insecticidals for that. So those are the starting places for pets. You guys, there were so there are so many topics for pets that we could talk about. So we want to know in the chat what other topics about pets do you want to know about? Do you want to know about pet arthritis? Do you want to know about getting odors out of things? Do you want to know, like, what do you want to know? Because we're happy to build these little mini classes and mini workshops to help you get the most out of your oils and to help you turn to natural options versus chemical options when you're working with your pet. So just let us know in the chat. And anything else you guys want to add? Um, this month in April, you can get citronella for free with your loyalty rewards order. So if you're looking for summer solutions, Sarah says anything good for ear infections or ear gunk. She has an American bulldog mix. Believe he has allergies. Kristen wants to know about anxiety and arthritis. Yeah. 
Well, okay. uh, if we go back for a second to arthritis, you can look at copaiba and frankincense yep. in their food. <laughs> That's my phone ring, by the way. Perfect That's timing. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's my husband calling, guys. <laughs> yeah, and then topically, Candice, you and I talked about aroma touch yesterday yep. for arthritis so, issues or muscle. Aroma issues. touch is amazing for dogs. Um, great to even do at night. It's so calming and soothing and all the things you can use this um, to calm. You can use this if they're sore, you can use this for arthritis. But again, all you're gonna do is dilute and then massage it into the top of their body. It's like amazing. Um, it's one of the things I've run agility competitively with my dogs and um, Copaiba and Aroma Touch combined is, I, I made up a spray and I would literally spray her down um, morning and night during competitions and just massage it right in. So, um, yeah. so good for them. I'll also say a little, little plug here, but as more and more people turn to holistic, pet care and you know prevention with pets they're looking at oils they're looking at natural supplementation we do have some that the pets can take and my husband just finished his animal chiropractic so if you're local here in Barrie and you're looking for an animal chiropractor you can come and connect with him and um it, it, I'm amazed at how quickly things work on animals just like children especially with chiropractic like Candace you had your dog adjusted last week Yep. And you were telling me what yesterday, how amazing he was doing. I'm, I'm a firm believer in uh, dog chiropractics. I've, my dogs have gotten chiropractic work for eons of years. Um, actually, Sean, Wendy's husband adjusted um, one of my dogs last week. And like, it's, it's like that results are like that. And you see it right away, which is so amazing. That's the one thing I love about a lot of these treatments and that um, is that uh, they're, they work so quickly. So I, I mean, I'll be my dogs will be back. <laughs> yeah. We're lucky he just lives here. So, um, and then as far, Kristen said, her animal chiro stopped your dog's urinary issues after one adjustment. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. It can just be the nervous system, you know, and a little bit of a compression on something. As for anxiety, you know, we talked about calmer, we talked about copaiba, lavender is a typical and simple one to turn to. And Candace, you mentioned introducing to the dogs before they have the issue. So do a, an introduction when they are calm. Um, Just like one using. thing to note on that. So for anybody who's using um, your calming oils on dogs um, for like things like fireworks or anything that's scary, you need to introduce the oils in a, like the, those particular oils at a time when they're like playing with their toys or they're getting fed, like anything that is like a really happy time or they're like hanging out on the couch for, with you, relaxing. If you don't um, introduce them and give them a positive experience or multiple positive experiences with the oils or those particular oils before the actual fireworks, what happens is, is if I just threw lavender on for the very first time and it was firework time, they associate the lavender, the smell of the lavender to the fireworks. So it actually makes them more anxious. It's going to have the opposite effect. Um, they're really sensitive to that. So you need to pre-introduce these oils in positive manners before you use them for anything like that. Yeah. Good call. All right, you guys, thank you so much for your comments and questions. We went a little long, but we did want to make sure that we were addressing. Um, we'll go back through the comments and just see if we can answer anything more. And if you're watching the replay, just type them in, okay? Or if you're watching this video replay later, reach out to one of us or jump onto our community and ask there. So thanks, you guys. Next week, we are Jan is going to lead a session on allergies because this question is coming up a lot too. We're going to talk about the gold standard in allergies, how you can address them, and then some extra um, oils and options as well. So we will see you next week, Wednesday at 11 a.m. And if you have any questions ahead of time, just let us know. Thanks, guys.